mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Welcome to this service for the second Sunday in Lent from St Mary's East Barnet. My name is Alec, I'm the Rector of East Barnet and as St Mary's is still closed for public worship, to help keep our local community safe during the COVID-19 pandemic, this service is still being recorded in the Vicarage. There are many other services online on our YouTube channel and other opportunities for learning and socialising together as the church remains active and vibrant in the life of our community. And in this holy season of Lent, I'd particularly like to invite you to join our Lent group. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth on Thursday evenings on Zoom. For details of that and everything else that's going on within our local community, please look at our church website, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or email administrator at stmarieseastbarnet.org for weekly news from St Mary's. If you'd like to support St Mary's and our work in the local community, then you can do so by making a donation online at stmarieseastbarnet.org forward slash giving. And to join in with our service this morning, you'll be able to follow a complete order of service on our website, and many of the words that you need to say will appear on the screen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our seasonal canticle is a song of the word of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Blessed are those who have endured temptation. They have stood the test and will receive the crown of life. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel Canticle is the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath. God swore to our father, Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. In the old city of Jerusalem, there are a series of streets called the Via Dolorosa, the Way of Sorrows, 
that winds through the covered passageways of the medieval Arab souk, from just north of Temple Mount to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That is where the Via Dolorosa comes to its tragic end, at the traditional site of Jesus' crucifixion. The Via Dolorosa follows the path that some believe Jesus took on his way from the Roman garrison headquarters to the place of the skull, the place of his brutal killing. If you visit Jerusalem, you can walk the way of the sorrows and imagine that you are following directly after Christ. And pilgrims to that holy city still do this with great devotion, especially on Fridays, and especially on Good Friday, when great crowds throng the streets and stations of the route. You can even rent a great cross to carry along the route, on your shoulders, for about £20, from a Muslim family who have a shop near Lion's Gate, and sometimes groups of pilgrims share in carrying this load together, alternating the role of the one who, carrying their cross, leads the others as they seek to follow after Christ. I was once in Jerusalem, just leaving that part of the road where the Via Dolorosa turns for its final few yards before coming around a blind corner and into the courtyard outside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, when I saw a group of pilgrims just like this. The man leading them was sweating under the weight of the cross he carried, and staring down with concentration at the stones of the passageway, which are very uneven, to avoid tripping up. Behind him there followed men and women singing prayerfully. The only problem was that the man carrying the cross and his followers were so intent on their act of devotion that they walked straight past the turning toward the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and then they carried along Bait Habad and off into the distance, eventually merging with the shoppers of the Souk. They wanted to walk the Via Dolorosa, but they missed its end. The Way of the Cross is not only a pilgrim route through the old city of Jerusalem, it's Jesus' teaching to his disciples and to the crowd that were attracted by accounts of his healing powers that there was more to his life than this success as a teacher and a popular leader. That as a result of his way of living, he would undergo great suffering and be rejected by the authorities of Israel and be killed. And then after three days be raised. It's Jesus' teaching that if we wish to be his followers, we must follow him in this same way of risking confrontation and rejection and danger and resurrection only by the faithfulness of God. The way of the cross is Jesus' teaching that the Son of Man and the sons and daughters of humanity now must give up our ownership of our lives our dignity, our hope of power, and even our sense of self, in order to receive these again renewed, purified, and true in a new life which we live to God. When Jesus said to the crowd who gathered wherever he went, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, he was calling them to literally be willing to bear the danger of death at the hands of violent and repressive imperial injustice, and also to be willing to die to themselves and their own ideas of their best self-interest, to any desire they held to claim the pace of others, or to follow the way of power, or indeed to follow any way but that of Jesus and the good news which he declares to and for us. Dying to oneself, giving up oneself, doesn't necessarily mean giving up on oneself. We deny ourselves the desire for the place of others, or the way of power, in order to find a truer self, 
a self that is our true identity as God sees us, yet which is also rooted in our imitation of Jesus' absolute self-awareness and his unique confidence in the calling of God to him. A self that's rooted in imitation of the humiliated and crucified Jesus, who was faithful to his calling to oppose injustice and to share in the depths of human suffering. A self that is rooted in the risen and vindicated Jesus, in whom our faith in God's love is proved to be not in vain, but to be glorified. To deny oneself doesn't, even in this Lenten season, necessarily mean denying oneself something like chocolate. Indeed, when done with a focus on our own preconceptions of success in the practice of piety, rather than on the way of Jesus, then some potentially important spiritual practices can become distractions from his way. Denial of self is far more about the discernment of our own unique calling that we find in relation to Jesus' identity and relation to the Father, his death and resurrection. Jesus' good news to us is of a kingdom where we all share in a fullness of understanding and awareness of our identity that comes on a journey of imitation of Jesus' declaration that to gain an awareness of a secure identity in God, we must be willing to risk losing a sense of secure identity in the world. We are called to follow the way of Jesus, bearing each our own cross, not a rented one, discerning a calling that is real to us and rooted in the identity of Jesus, rather than being distracted by the hope of another's calling or the dream of finding a path to power. Attentive at all times to the reality of our identity and to whose way we are following. We can walk the Via Dolorosa, each one of us, as unique disciples of the one way of Jesus and of his way to the cross. Let us now affirm our faith in him, his death and resurrection, his relationship to the Father and our discipleship. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of intercession this week have been prepared by our friend Mike Pierce, but they're read by Roger Melling. Let us pray in the power of the Holy Spirit who guides and enables the people of God. Lord, as your word has been revealed from the days of Abraham, make us faithful to believe your promises and follow the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Give us a new awareness of your unique sacrifice on our behalf and teach us to be humble in acknowledging that all our gifts come from you. May you live in us that in our small acts of sacrifice, the light of your resurrection may shine through and give them meaning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you walked on earth and told people to look around them to find God. And people saw the beauty and wonders of earth and sky. 
of flower and of field. When we look around, we often see factories, offices, houses, cars, traffic, and it is easy to forget the world belongs to God. Help us to recognise God's presence in the wonders of science, in discoveries mankind has made, in finding and using the resources of the earth. We pray that we may be careful stewards of all your bounteous gifts to us and that we may never cease to marvel in the wonder and mystery of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for, for and give you thanks for our community, our neighbours, friends and for the people around us with whom we work and share our daily lives. We pray for those who are old and lonely, those isolated because of ill health and those who find it difficult to be accepted. Show us all what we can do to help those around us and teach us to be good neighbours and true friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we acknowledge with shame and sorrow all the sin, hatred and injustice which have led and still lead to violence and war. We pray for places in the world where tensions are high and the peace that is your will seems to be far, so far away. We pray that nations and people everywhere may turn to you, the Prince of Peace, so that war and terror, cruelty and hatred may end and peace and justice, kindness and love may reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your many miracles of healing. And we pray for all who administer to the sick and infirm. We bring before you in a moment of quietness those we know or love who are ill or in need at this time. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Trevor and Luke, Janet, Angela, Jilly Don and family. Jean, Pauline, Raymond, Chris P, Janet, Barry, Debbie, Emma, Sue Ian and family, Sue, Emma, Grazia, Mike and Lisa. We pray that your blessing be upon them and those who love and care for them. And we pray that they may find encouragement and peace. Lord, we ask you to be all with all those who are grieving today over the loss of a loved one. May their sorrow be lit with the brightness of the resurrection. May they be assured that they will meet again those whom they have loved and lost. We remember Mark Langham, Pat and Cyril Corio. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we go out into the world today, we remember that your son was tempted by the forces of evil, but chose faithfulness rather than popularity, service instead of fame, sacrifice instead of power. These temptations still come to us, Lord, and we are far weaker. We pray for the strength to shun them as he did, so that we may be of use to God and to man. You have taught us to overcome our sins with prayer, fasting and generosity. We pray that you accept our disciplines and when we fall by our weaknesses, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. 
Amen. If you've been joining in with this service on Sunday mornings when it premieres at 10 a.m., then you still have plenty of time to join us to catch up over coffee at 11. We do this every week while we're not able to open our building for public worship. If you'd like to learn more or receive an invitation to Zoom for our Sunday morning coffee catch-ups, then please email administrator at stmarieseastbarnet.org. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.